morning. Thank everybody for coming. This morning we're back in the base Medrash. Last week's share in Hilchas Yichud was uh, in the elementary school classroom. Which that itself sometimes could be Hilchas Yichud issues. But here we're ta- here to talk about grave mistakes from medical malpractice to excessive force. And this week's share is obviously, if you pick up from the end of the uh, topic, is about current events here in America, which has swept the world, in which, unfortunately, there have been uh, incidents involving police officers, law enforcement, and the death of people, and it's sparked outrage and protests, riots, general violence all across the land. And I'd like to talk about it this morning, but before I talk about it, I think we need a hakdama. And that introduction is from this week's parsha. Last week's parsha we read the parsha shalach is most is definitely noted for the story about Maraglim. That's unfortunately a key story in the parsha, where you had these started off as great people, these leaders of Klai Yisrael, Moshe Rabbeinu, used as spies to go to the land of uh, Eretz Yisrael. <clears throat> and report on it back to the Jewish people. But their report turned out to be very negative and caused the Bnei Yisrael to lose faith in Hashem and a tremendously horrible Gezira that that the entire generation did not see to live to go in there to Yisrael. Instead, it cost them 40 years in Midbar, Moshe Rabbeinu himself, lost out, and just total, total, one of the most horrific sins. Chazal say that the the Meraglam cried, what they call Bechia Shalchina, a crying of nothing, and because of that, in the story of the Meraglam took place, Chazal and Tishabov, that caused not just destruction for that generation, in the desert, but destruction for Jews throughout the millennium. And, okay, we have to try to digest that, try to understand that parsha to the best of our abilities. At the end of, the, of uh, this past week's Torah learning, Mafter, the last psukim, are the psukim, what we call the third parsha of Kriyashma, parsha of Tzitzis, and the juxtaposition why is it that those two things are next to each other? It's sharing the same parasha. So there's a Sifri, which is explained by Chaskal Sarni, Shiva and Chevron, that connects the two parashas based on the Pasuk at the end of the parasha of Kriyashma, where the Torah warns, A person should not go after his be led astray by his heart, by his eyes. And the way Sarna explains it, that the underlying cause for the sin of the Muraglam, Muraglam saw Eretz Yisrael. They saw Eretz Yisrael, they saw tremendous, miraculous things, tremendous nisim, tremendous positive things about Eretz Yisrael. They saw something which they attributed to be a bad thing, which in reality really was a good thing. They saw people dying, they saw this, and they called it Eretz Ochel, it's a shvel, it's a land that eats and kills its inhabitants, and they spoke Lashon Hara about Eretz Yisrael. And Chaskal Sarna explains, based on this Sifri, that really the root of it was their own bias, their own bad midos, their own negative, emotional response. And their job as Miragla was to report what they saw, a fact-finding mission. 
they were sent on. Instead, they gave a slanted, biased report, which forever shook and caused much suffering to the Jewish people. I think it's not a stretch to say the Miraglim were, uh, unfortunately, the first misfits responsible for what you call fake news. They took a whole situation, which they should have reported what they saw, and instead, they didn't stick to the facts, they didn't stick to all the news that's fit to print. Rather, they gave their biased perception of what was around. And I think in any discussion over here about this topic, you know, we, we're definitely not getting what I hope to do, a halachic Torah discussion on this topic. <clears throat> uh, it's definitely not really what's being debated in the world today. I'm not sure how much even debate there is. The quote-unquote discussions about police brutality, racism, which has evolved after these incidents, has been at least political, very much politically correct, and uh, you know it's tricky. It, you know, whatever uh, type of journalism that used to exist, you know, you have to look at the microscope to find it. And uh, there's a lot of tainted views. And it's good for us to examine, just to, at least from the Torah perspective, obviously we're not imposing our ideas on society, per se. But as a Torah Jew, it's important to know the correct, I think, Torah perspective of what do we say about these situations? You know, uh, I'll review the last case. The case in Atlanta where you had an arrest being made for an individual who was some level of intoxication, asleep in his car, blocking a drive through at a restaurant. And you could see the video, how the officers really had to wake this person up. The person wasn't fully functioning. And after, I guess it was determined to arrest him, person resisted arrest, got into a struggle, literally was fighting with the officers, took away one officer's taser. As the other officer pursued him, he fired the taser, turned back and fired the taser at the pursuing officer, which within that moment, he fired back and shot, which shot a couple of shots which killed him. And just even analyzing that case, it's not a simple case how to explain what's going on. And there are probably different forensic uh, opinions, definitely police opinions, of uh, who's responsible in that case. So I'd like to analyze that from halachic perspective. I guess you have to be careful. You know, I give a whole thing about bias. So, uh, full disclosure, uh, my, my father, I worked for the NYPD for probably 30 years. Uh, you didn't you didn't know that one, huh? He, he mostly had a desk job, though he did get a shield, you know, by the end of his life. He actually worked in uh, police headquarters in Manhattan. So uh, I definitely have a certain affinity for uh, NYPD Blue, but I think what I'll try to give over is the black and white halacha without too much spin. So in general, when we talk about damage, we talk about uh, you know, mistakes, well, even assuming there was some level of mistake. So what's the level of culpability for a person? 
And that's what you call Baba Kama Shaila. And uh, the the Gemara basically says a cloud. For sure, when it comes to damages, Misa might be a different deal. But when somebody hurts, harms another person, another one's property, Adma Mazik has the highest degree of, of culpability. Torah expects a person to be fully cognizant at all times. Mar even talks about uh, a case when a person does damage when he's sleeping. He should have realized before he went down, he lay down to sleep, that there are things around he could have, uh, he potentially could do damage to if he's uh, tossing and turning in the middle of the night. So the Torah expects a person who is a Baruch Hashem thinking person who is in control of himself to try to the utmost of the highest level be cognizant not to damage another person. And thus the Torah has a very high standard on a mazik. It's really the machlokas rishonim. Adam a mazik might be even responsible for an onis, for an accident. If something, if you accidentally damage a person, accidentally damage their possessions, there still might be responsibility because of the din of Adam Mazak. You are a person doing damage, and the Torah expects a lot from Adam Mazak. And, okay, there are different shitas in the Rishonim, how far that goes. <clears throat> there are some Rishonim that exempt Adam Mazak from Onus Gamar, but it's machlokets. It's uh, definitely a debate. Uh, but you for sure walk away seeing that Adam Mazak has a very high level of responsibility. Top of that, we know the halachas, masachas makos, that if a person kills bishogin, if a person kills, definitely not premeditated, bishogin is not known as, it's not a complete accident, but he did not, totally did not intend to do that. Allah is, he has to go to Golos. In Tanzu Bezdin, <coughs> we have Ari Miklat, and there is even Allah, the Gol Adam, the relatives of the person who passed away, would be allowed to pursue him, to kill him. And thus, somebody who kills even the Shogate, even Again, the word accidental is not the perfect word. But a person kills without malice, without intention. So that person, there is a, a level of going to Gullus. So to begin with, you do see there's a very high standard, for, of course, for premeditated actions taken by a person, mistakes. But certainly, when it comes to but even, excuse me, even things which are not premeditated, even some, you know, unintentional, is probably the best word, unintentional consequences, grave mistakes. Simply, we see there might be culpability, you know, definitely in terms of damages. It's on the mazik. There's, if you want to kill the shogate, when you want to go to Gaulus. So the Torah does have a very high standard puts on a person for even what you call grave mistakes. <clears throat> the Shulchan Aruch, which is one of the Marmakomos I put on your sheets, uh, email was sent out this morning, if one didn't receive it, to check their inbox. But I would like to start with the halachas of doctors. Let's begin with medical malpractice. And I'm gonna be careful how I tread you know, I don't know if there is any law enforcement families other than me involved in the share, but for sure doctors, right? There's a lot of doctors here. So medical malpractice is uh, something which I'm sure many are uh, uh, quite aware of. <laughs> they might be paying pretty high premiums for insurance to uh, defend against. <clears throat> so you have I'm starting Shulchan Aruch Yeradeh Simen Shin Lamevav. In fact, 
Might as well read it fully inside. Shulchan Aruch says, Dine HaRefua, Dine HaRofe, Nas Na Torah Rishos HaRofe L'Rapos. The Torah gives permission for a doctor to heal. Right? That itself, you know, we can have a whole thing, we give a whole share, a whole discussion about the concept of doctors. And the Shulchan Aruch spells out that doctors, the Torah gives permission for them to engage in Rafua, who mitzvah he, right? It's good to think you know, a doctor, every moment he's doing his job, that's a potential mitzvah, mitzvah, and he's saving lives. If, is there a doctor in the house? If he holds himself back from answering, he's on vacation. I raise the Shofi Tamim. Shofi with very strong words. He's spilling blood. And even if there is a doctor, but you know what? You're a better doctor. You know, look, it's a schus for a person to be healed. And Lav Dafka, every person has that schus. You're a, a, a good doctor. Good from doctor. Hey, you know, you have a big schus. You potentially you can help the person. Meal Yasek Peruf also Elam Kenu Baki. Shulchan Aruch writes, you should not be involved in medicine unless you're a Baki, at least a, a trained emergency medical technician. It's all guys. I assume that's all people have to also know their limits. Below he Shem Gadomi Meno, you shouldn't have there anyone better than you. You know, a guy in Hatzalo call, you should have. Uh, the most senior member respond. Shimlokin, I raise the Shofi Damim. Once again, the Shulchan Aruch uses this harsh lashon that one is considered Shofi Damim. Then Reaper Shlobishus Bezdin. And if someone uh, would be involved in medicine without the proper authorization, Bezdin didn't authorize him. Chayib Tashumim, Afil Mubaki. Look, uh, he'd be responsible for any damages. Uh, even if he's a bucky. So that's some background. But here's where I want to zoom in. In Rebibushos Bezdin, if a person has the full authority, he's a licensed doctor, Bezdin said he could operate over here, Vita Vihizik, he made a mistake and he did damage. So the way we built it up so far, look, a doctor who does damage. Seemingly, that's what you call Adma Mazak. And even if it was unintentional, okay, but that's part of the responsibilities, no? Part of the responsibilities of, uh, of, a, of a person is to be extra cautious, he never does damage. So, you make a mistake. Pashtas, what we've seen so far in Hilfas Nizikin, is one is responsible for that. However, the Shulchan Aruch over here says, in Reaper Vishaz Bezin, Vitav Hizik, Hata Midine Adam, however, Vachai Bidina Shemai. One is Potter, one is exempt from paying any damages in a humanly court. Bidina Shemai, he would be Chayev. And therefore, there might be some responsibility that a person would uh, seek in this. One more step. Then Himez Venodolo, Shashadag. If he did make a mistake, he killed somebody, and uh, comes out that it was a shogeg, Gola al yado, then the doctor would go to Golos uh, in such a situation. Now, so it sounds like there's there's three levels here, and I'm going to discuss in depth these three levels. There's one level: could Bezin enact payment from you? Could you be sued? According to the Torah law, a doctor who makes a mistake. So the Shulchan Aruch says, and I'll explain it in a moment. No, you are Pater Midine Adam. The guy can't sue you. He can't take you to any Bezdin in the land and extract money from you. Midine Shemayim, that's a second din. Yeah, he would be Chayef. And it might be the type of thing, it's a good Shaila. 
for a doctor, but if Chas Hashem there was a mistake, the Shulchan Aruch does say there's some din of Chayim Bidine Shemayim, and there might be you know, something people might want to look into, what to do about that. Definitely something that uh, should cause a person to do tshuva. You know, the you know, any time that somebody you know a real mistake. We're not just talking, a doctor tried and the person passed away. We're talking about a mistake. The taught, you made an actual blunder. This is something that's legitimate that a person could be sued on. A, pa- a person's patient dies, I don't think that's what the Shulchan Aruch is referring to. He's talking about a case of where you made a mistake. Something we classified as, as hesit, that you damaged it. So the halachi is your potter. There is a concept that stage two, the Yechai B'din Yishamayim. And the third step is the person dies, do you kill him B'shogeg, you be Chayv Dalas. So it seems like we're Mekel in category one. Category two and three, we still hold the doctor responsible. Why in category one do we say that this doctor who makes a mistake, this is medical, uh, malpractice. He made a mistake. So why is it that he's potter? Why can't he be sued? So the Gura read right over here in the Shulchan Aruch brings the Atzotosefta in Baba Kama and he also brings it the Ramban in the Sefer Torah. So Adam brings it down Rofi Uman Sharipi Bershaz Bezdin, the Hizik. So it was Potter. You see, he's Potter. From damages. And the reason being, I saw explained, was a Takana. Very interesting. What's a Takana? It's an enactment made by Chazal. Really, in a Hanami. There might be some legal precedent why one should be chayiv in such a case. In fact, that's why you're chayiv b'dinei shemayim. But the reason why one is potter is because no one's going to want to be doctors. Sound familiar? If every time a doctor makes a mistake, he could be sued. He could be you know, chased after by the family. So then no one's going to want to be doctors. And if no one's going to be, be doctors, that's a big problem for society. It's very important to have good, well-trained doctors. And if you're going to make these lawsuits so extreme, people constantly suing doctors for mistakes, there's no protection for doctors, then it's going to, the ultimate, it's going to hurt society. So the Chazal made an enactment because of Tikkun HaOlam. They know what? A doctor is potter. Amazing. Right? I'm sure a few doctors in the audience are wishing, wow, I really, that would really help my malpractice insurance if uh, they knew this halacha. Yeah, it sure would. <laughs> it sure would. And uh, I remember years ago, Doctor explaining, OBGYN was explaining that nowadays there's so many decisions in medicine that doctors have to make vis a vis malpractice insurance. And vis a vis, you know, if they're, if they're doing something which they could be blamed if something goes wrong. So, you know, it's much easier to do a cesarean uh, delivery than a natural delivery. And, uh, there's less uh, room for uh, potential malpractice lawsuits. So doctors are quicker to do that. It may not be in the best interest of the patient, but look, this is uh, our society. So it, it, it's a dangerous path that uh, I believe American law, where they do have a uh, you know, pretty big allowance for lawsuits it, 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 it discourages doctors from being doctors, and even in the second step, it handcuffs many doctors in the procedures that they do 
because of fear of lawsuits and they may not be doing what's best for the patient. They have to do what's best for the patient vis-a-vis what they're able to do with insurance and everything. It's, it's wild. So the Torah's perspective is we give a dispensation, we allow a ptur, an exemption for doctors. If they make a mistake, 100%, it's their fault. But they're potter from paying. And uh, but they would they would get cults. So that is the halacha here in Shulchan Aruch about doctors. It's very interesting. Is this Shulchan Aruch, which I started with first, sounds like it's against a Gemara and Marcos. Gemara and Marcos, really the end of the Mishnah on Daf Ches. The Gemara and Marcos says, really, it's Darshan the Pasuk, which is the source of. Uh, of Galos, Rasha Yavos, Re'el, Bayar, a person who comes, meets up, a friend in, in the forest, and he was cutting wood, and basically he maneuvered to chop the wood, and the head of the hammer falls off and kills somebody. So that person, the person chopping would go to Gaulus over that. So at the end of the mission, the last three lines there, Abashol Omer, Macha Tavas Eitzim Rishus. The person who goes to Gaulus is someone who's doing something by his own fruition. He's, why is he chopping wood in the, in the, in the forest? Because he needs wood. Simple. It's a personal decision for one to do that. And he mis- made a mistake in that. Unfortunately, it was, it was not intended. But through him, somebody died. So uh, you have to go to Galos. So Avkorishos, any case a person makes a personal decision, they do something and unintentionally somebody dies through it. Allah is your Chayv Galos. But Abashol says, it has a very important exclusion. Yatsa of, this comes to exclude a father. Hamakes beno, who is giving punishment to his son. Varav Rodes Talmido, a Rebbe, we don't do this nowadays, but a Rebbe who is hitting uh, his student, the Shliach Bezin, as well as the Shliach Bezin. You look at Rashi's over here, or the Lazar ben Yaakov, the first time, okay. Of Makas ben No, Batos of the Derech, Acheres, he's putting him on the right path, and feels the only way to do it is through uh, the rod. Shliach Bezdin, the way Rashi learned Pshan Shliach Bezdin, Hamalka or Bohim, Machayev Malkus. We're talking about Shliach Bezdin who's whipping the person who deserves Malchus, he's whipping him, and through that, uh, that whipping, the person dies. That's also unintentional. Anytime before a person gets Malchus, they evaluate how much he can take, even though Malchus is our bottom chasat, that's where he starts at 39, but it's downgraded based on, this, on the physical ability of this person to take the lashes, so it doesn't evaluate to that at a time. But they could make a mistake, and it could be that they gave him more than what he could handle. And uh, so in such a case, the Shlech Bezdin, the Mishnah is saying, well, does not go to Gullahs. Just for the record, the Rambam over here has a different shot. The Rambam learns, we're not even talking about a Shlech Bezdin who is hitting someone to go to Malkos. It means a, a, literally a shliach of Bezdin su- bringing a person who's summoned to Bezdin. Right? Happens all the time. Bezdin summons someone to come and they don't come. So when Bezdin had powers, they would send out officers to arrest the person, to bring him to court. So within a struggle of a person resisting arrest, if the person ends up dying, shliach Bezdin, Lacha is 
that they do not go to those. And what's the reasoning behind this? Sounds like from the Mishnah. Because you're doing a mitzvah. If you're involved in doing a mitzvah, and that's why this person died, you're using force, you didn't realize it was unintentional, it was excessive force, and the person died over this. So the halacha is that in such a case, you would not get gullus. A father hitting a child would not get gullus. I'm not giving any ideas over here. Uh, a Rebbe hitting a Talmud or not get gullus. And thirdly, a Shlech Bezdin, an officer of the courts who's trying to either give off Malchus, caning, or he's uh, an officer bringing someone to the court. Either of the scenarios, uh, the Allah is that one that, that you're part of. So you see here, this is already another dispensation we see. We saw before there's a dispensation given by a doctor who said that he's putter and damages because of the fact if he causes harm, if he kills somebody, right? He's putter to pay for any damages because of the fact that otherwise no one's gonna to wanna to be doctors. And we see also a second dispensation in terms of gallus, that if the person was involved in doing the mitzvah, so they wouldn't be responsible in such a case to uh, any degree of responsibility. So, you know, the din of gallus is also based on some level of responsibility. And uh, if they're doing a mitzvah, they're totally exempt. Now the question I saw asked is what's the difference between a doctor and a sheikh bezin. We said in this Mishnah here in Makos that the sheikh bezdin parent, they're exempt. They wouldn't be chayv dolos. Yet we saw by a doctor, if he kills unintentionally, halacha is that you do get dolos. Why does he get dolos? Why is a doctor any different than a shleich bezdin? A doctor is also doing the mitzvah, right? Rappel yirape, the kanch nasu reshos lu rofil rappels u mitzvah. Right, pashtus isn't he doing a mitzvah? So, I saw a few answers to this question. The Archa Shulchan over here, he holds really, there is no difference. And if we had a case of a doctor who, uh, who is similar to the case over there by a Shlech Bezin, yeah, a doctor would not be gullus. The Shulchan Aruch happens to be talking about a case of where there's some level of culpability. It's a, uh, there is some element of where he should have been a little more careful, he should have been a little more responsible, and thus that's why you're chayv dalas. But if it was totally not your fault, you wouldn't be chayv dalas. Just like the mission over there. That's what the Aruch HaShulchan says. Definitely doesn't sound so pashat. That's a pretty big you know, qualification he's making in the Mishnah, that there was some level of culpability over here, but if there wouldn't be culpability, then you'd be potter. That is a big uh, chiddish in the qualifying of this halacha. It's not clear in the Shulchan Aruch, what the Shulchan said, but he realizes he's answering a question, and what he's saying is not so simple, if you look in his language over there. But that's the Aruch Shulchan's answer. The Yad Avram, which is on the page in the Shulchan Aruch, he also is bothered by this question. It's really, he brings it from, let's say, from Maisa or Keach, asks this question. And listen to his answer. Very interesting answer. Yesh Lomar. Tishani Hacha, over here by a doctor, it's different. Shalot Atzah Mitzvah Berufu Asa Kishemes. 
You're not doing a mitzvah with your patient when the patient dies. Masha Inke, Bechohani, the Kachosh of Ramam Sham, all the other cases the Ramam is talking about. Av Shemes, even though the person passed away. Never love, mitzvah to Avid, the Mashalam to Torah. You do a mitzvah in what you're teaching him Torah. O Shezmina did, or you're doing a mitzvah, we are bring him to Bezdin. It sounds like the Yad of Ram is making a chalak. When do we say that there is this dispensation that we allow to total, you're exempt, you don't have to go to Gauls. When is that? That's when you're involved in a mitzvah. So, Shlech Bezdin, the Rebbe, parent, that's a mitzvah. You teach him Torah, you're giving him a chenach. The doctor who made a mistake, no, that's not a mitzvah. Haraya, because he died. It sounds like the way the Yad of Rum is understanding it. Well, what is this difference? It sounds like a very interesting qualification he has. He's learning that when it comes to teaching Torah, guiding people, Chanach, Shlech Bezdin, the effort you invest, the action that you do, that's the mitzvah. Is the mitzvah the result, the lesson? No. Obviously it isn't, because the Shlech Bezdin tried to get this guy to go to Bezdin. <laughs> he didn't go. <laughs> he resisted arrest. And he definitely didn't make it there alive. So, if you're judging the end result, that's, you didn't do it, Territus. The Yad Avram is looking at it, those mitzvos are involving the action. I'm the Shlech Bezdin. If I do my part to get the guy to come to Bezdin, I'm doing a mitzvah. I'm being mechanif, I'm doing a mitzvah. Regardless of, you know, obviously my goal when I my child, my student, is that he understands the lesson. But my job is to teach the lesson. As opposed to a doctor, there it sounds like it's a result-oriented result business. A guy is a nice doctor, but unfortunately people are dying, so people are not going to use it. The mitzvah, the idea of Rappo Yerapos, is, okay, you have that mitzvah when you heal a person. But the person dies, you made a mistake, the person dies, you do the mitzvah. The mitzvah there is result-oriented. That seems to be what the Yad Avram is saying. I don't fully get it, and uh, I assume our doctors in the audience will also be like a little confused, you know, like, I don't know, that sounds a little harsh. You know, we only measure things by results. I mean, that is true to some degree, but it does sound a little arbitrary that these mitzvahs are defined by the action and this is by the result. But additionally, I don't think it fits with the shach. If you look in the shach, the shach is talking here at the end that if a person, a doctor, kills his patient uh, unwillingly, uh, unintentionally. The Shach writes, One should not stop being a doctor just because of the fear that he might make a mistake. And it's a mitzvah. The Shach is saying, even taking with it the potential for mistakes, just being involved in being a doctor, that's a mitzvah. So the shach seems to be saying, even though there exists very clearly the possibility of mistakes, but that doesn't take away from your mitzvah. Put for care, you're doing a mitzvah, you're doing the right thing, we give you a bracha, you should be successful, and because you're doing a mitzvah, you should do it. So 
this, this answer, the out of Rum, I don't think the Shach would agree to. Besides the fact that it does sound some, quite arbitrary. So we are back in terms of that question. What is the difference between Shlech Bezdin, which the Mishnah, the Gemara and Makos clearly says the one is exempt, versus here in Shulchan Arach, where a doctor does have some responsibility, would have to go into Golos, you know, just to put it in policeman's terms, right? If you kill unintentionally, not to meet going to Golos, is at least we take away, you know, you know, he gets a death job. <laughs> He's got to go into hiding. That's literally what it means. And it's a big not Right? We're not talking about charges against a person. We're not talking about being sued. We're just talking, do we, you know, you know, do, does the person have to run away? Do we, or no, look, you did the right thing. Continue doing exactly what you did. That's not going if you go to Gullahs or not, at least from a, a Torah perspective. And uh, so it still needs explanation. Why by a doctor do we say that they would be responsible for Gullahs? If a Shlech Bezdin, if uh, a teacher, we see, we're not going to Gullahs. There's a special dispensation, special exemption, because they're doing a mitzvah. What's the difference? So perhaps we could get to an answer in a little bit. But I'd like to bring I think, two other major points, I think, in clarifying this matter. Uh, the first is from a child, Shulis Hassam Sofer. Now, I must admit, I did not put that on the sheets. I have good reason. I still remember the Sharfer that's all always bemoaning to me. Yeshiva has a pretty good library, but in some areas we're a little bit spotty. I don't believe the yeshiva has this volume of the Shalos and Shubas Chassam Sofer. I just checked the other day, and I remember this Sefer in particular by Sharfman bemoaning this to me years ago, that uh, the yeshiva doesn't have a full set of uh, Shalos and Shubas Chassam Sofer. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't check online you know, for a while during the pandemic one of these uh, Otsar Chachmas, one of these uh, websites that has, you know, tens of thousands of Svarim, is free to the public. But uh, I don't, uh, I'm not sure if that still uh, is. But either way, I didn't have a chance to uh, see it inside, but I did see it quoted. So I'm so far was dealt with a very interesting question. Maisa Shahaya. There is a Jewish woman who was, uh, in her house one day, together with her, her maid, lady working in her house, and all of a sudden her maid faints. She seems she is unwell, and I can't explain to you the medical procedure of this. It seems in those days a way to heal a person. Again, I don't know what the person was sick with. That's not clear, and I don't know why this works. Um, it could be there's some people over here who could explain to me why this works. But it seems the procedure was to pour down the throat of this person who's sick, who's fainted, some whiskey. Yes, I know. It's perfect for Father's Day, right? Whiskey always helps, right? But I don't know, but there is some form of healing. If you pour whiskey down, boy, it looks Get them back alive. Get them back alive. Right? In Russia, vodka, I think, would uh, do wonders in uh, the, Ru the Russian winters. So this woman goes to her cabinet to try to get some whiskey. Meanwhile, she reached for the wrong bottle in her cabinet, and she pulled out some poison. And she poured it down the throat of her maid, from all of a sudden, she killed her. And this poor lady was traumatized, obviously, by the whole incident. And she was reaching out to Sam Sofer, you know, what responsibility do I have? She obviously felt horrible that she, something like this happened. What should she do? 
So, before I get to the actual Pesach of Chassam Sofer, Chassam Sofer does say in this case, he talks about, there is a concept that if things happen to come about through you, even if there's no capability, there still is some halachic, hashkafic, you know, responsibility. You know, a person should do tshuva, so of course, so, you know, you got involved in such a case, you know, obviously it just happened, but okay, perhaps you're, you're, you're off the hook. But uh, there is some tshuva to be done. That is what the Chassam Sofer does conclude. But in terms of the actual halacha, Chassam Sofer says she is totally exempt from paying anything. Totally exempt. And there's no responsibility whatsoever for this labor. The question is why? Right? Why is she better than a doctor? A doctor, we said, okay, you might be part of from payment. Now, first of all, that was an act where people otherwise wouldn't be doctors. We don't see that really by other people. And he doesn't really invoke, in American law, there is an idea of a good Samaritan. There are some protective measures put in, because otherwise people wouldn't jump in and save people. So there is a concept of good Samaritan. But that's not what the Chassam Sofer argues. The Chassam Sofer argues that the reason why this woman should be putter is because the stress of this emergency situation contributed to her mistaken decision, and therefore for that alone, she should not be responsible. And it sounds like I saw they explained the Chassam so far. Perhaps in that same situation, if you had a doctor, person sick, okay, boom, Again, don't know how this works, but grab some whiskey. Instead, you grab poison. Yeah, a doctor would be kind for that. But a housewife, this woman most shouldn't be. Because a doctor perhaps is expected to be able to act under stress. It comes with the territory. It's part of the job. And if you made a blunder like that, you'd be held responsible. But take a regular person and put them in those situation. For them, that situation is too much to handle. The stress, and it's very understandable how they grabbed the wrong bottle. They were trying to help, and they did this. So the chassam sofa passed on this woman is potter. So this itself is a very important yisod we see from the chassam sofa that the stress of a situation does give room for halakhically someone to be exempt from responsibility, from damages in such a case. And although we would say that a doctor has a higher form of a responsibility in these cases, and the fact that it's stressful, look, this is why you get paid the big bucks, it comes with the territory. But Lachara, this I saw Post can bring, is that even the doctor, there are some scenarios which are overwhelming. It's some scenarios where it was a war zone scene in the ER. There was just so much going on, constantly patients coming in, overwhelmed, understaffed. So you know what? That's also contributing factors. And no one says a doctor's perfect. And when we make applications, no one would say that the police officer, police officers, are, of course, they're supposed to be able to respond in, you know, with good judgment, even in stressful situations. But not every matzav is the same. There's levels and levels. And if there's a level which is above and beyond average stress, so you have to judge them with that. That's part of the equation, too. So this Chassam Sofer does give us a precedent for an idea that one would be exempt from payment, from responsibility for damage incurred if it was brought about through a situation, an emergency situation, a stressful situation, where the person involved was not expected to reach that bar of, 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 of 
being able to focus without making a mistake. And finally, I'd like to get to one additional yesod, which could help shed light within our, our uh, situation, is a Shal Shuvas Shiva Halevi, which is a Vosner who profiled him last year, the great Posek dying from the Nebrak. And he deals with a practical case of a dentist who, uh, oh, nobody likes going to the dentist. I'm sorry. Some of my best friends are dentists, but yeah, no one likes going to the dentist. And uh, after you hear this story, boy, you have a dentist who, you know, was sitting there, the guy's in the chair for who knows how long, and I was realized that the dentist drilled the wrong tooth. Ouch. <laughs> You'd say other words, but uh, <laughs> your mouth is open. Just a little mishap. I actually saw this thing flashing blue colors, green colors. I was like, oh boy. But let me just repeat the Shevet Alevi. The Shevet Alevi, again, is talking about a case of a dentist who drills the wrong tooth. So the halal. But, but here, where you're doing the wrong tooth, that's not the proper procedure. You're doing the wrong thing. A mistake like that is not protected by this dispensation that we talked about before that we have for doctors. You have to make sure that the procedure, what you're doing, you're getting it right. And Rav Walsner says this for why one would be chayiv in this case, what I call category one. But perhaps you can explain this from the Gullah step two. And maybe we can answer the question that we posed before What's the difference between a Sheikh Bezdin and a doctor? That when it comes to when it comes to Gullahs, this halacha of Gullahs, whether someone is high of Gullahs here by a doctor, so we're saying, look, as long as you're doing the proper treatment, that itself maybe will pot to you. But at the same time, it could be Legabi Gullus, we say, and it's not good enough. Just like we said by the dentist. Look, I know you're trying to do the right thing in this, but who said that's a proper treatment? You know, by, by a doctor, it could be, it's tricky. It could be, on one level, it's enough of a proper treatment that would say you're exempt. But in terms of gullahs, the person died through it. Look, uh, it obviously wasn't uh, the proper treatment. And therefore, for gullahs, okay, you're going to have to go to gullahs. You know, the Mar does say in Kedushin, and this is really actually part of the inspiration for the share. It's been this last blot in Kedushin, pay days. Gemara says, Tov Shabarof in the Gehenna. Sometimes, even sometimes, even the best of doctors could end up in Gehenna. And one of the reasons why Rashi says is because they're responsible for deaths. They thought this was the right treatment, but it was a mistake. It wasn't the right treatment. And uh, it is a very tricky business. You know, the Vosner are saying you only have coverage. You're only covered providing, assuming that you're doing the proper treatment, treating the wrong truth or perhaps a doctor that didn't do the right treatment for a person, there is some responsibility for that. And uh, that is a big achrayis, as the shach says, it's not a reason not to be a doctor. We need our doctors, we should honor our doctors. You know, I think this whole past period was a period that uh, people got a new appreciation for people in the medical field. You know, it was a war zone, and every person who went into work in a hospital whether you're in the ward that deals with COVID patients or not, something that everyone should be makar tov for. But this, uh, the fact that Baruch Hashem, B'lein Har, our medical system held up, is a big deal. <clears throat> so, just to conclude, and maybe bring it back to the case we talked about to begin with. 
You see there are, again, three levels in halacha. Are you responsible for damages? Are you responsible for bidei shemayim? And like another level, would uh, one be chayv galos? Tom's a bezdin. Would be chayv galos uh, for someone dying unintentionally through your hands. And we still, I would say in terms of a law enforcement officer, again, assuming nothing was, was, was gross negligence, a person who made a mistake, even if we say in the case of Atlanta, police officer, there was a mistake, yeah? First of all, in terms of damages, a police officer, and this I suppose can bring, so it should be no different than a doctor. We need police officers if all the cops are going to quit because, because of uh, crazy societal lawsuits, pressure, who knows on them, and then the world will really need a lot of tikkun ha'ola. It'll be a bad place. We need doctors. We need police officers. So really, one should be covered and should be potter for that. Could be, could even be potter completely, even Midei Shemayim, potentially, if it reached a level, of course a police officer has a higher degree of being able to deal with stress than the average person. But it could be some scenarios are above that. And if it is a scenario of stress above what the threshold calls for, then we saw from the Chassam Sofer, there's a reason to potter, there's a reason to exempt. Again, I'm not saying in this case, it could be because he's a police officer, we expect a higher degree of stress. And even if the guy is shooting a phaser, you know, a taser at you, maybe that was the wrong response because a doctor, or in this case, a police officer should have a higher degree of uh, being able to function under stress. It's hard for us to judge because we're not in their shoes. It goes both ways. We don't know what that stress is. But you know what? A cop is expected, a police officer is expected to operate, just like we see by a doctor, on a higher level of stress than the average person. And thirdly, we see this is so from Vosner, if you're doing what's called the proper treatment, the proper procedure, so then one will be potter. But sometimes when a mistake happens, it could be defined what you did was not the proper procedure. You drilled the wrong tooth. You shouldn't have fired your gun. So that's very tricky. Not simple. We have to know what the procedure is. We have to understand that. And if the person did not follow the proper procedure, so then that would be a reason to hold one responsible. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Wish you a wonderful week. Be'ez Hashem. We hope to uh, continue for a few weeks as this man continues here in Yeshiva. Be'ez Hashem. The Hamidim are coming this week. So we hope to continue this uh, Sunday share for a few weeks. Uh, take our vacation afterwards. Thank you very much for listening. And have a wonderful, wonderful week.